This video is about metallic bonding and it just covers some of the higher content in the C2 specification. Now we've talked before in a previous video about metals being a giant structure. Okay, that's why you can have a large bit of aluminium for example. And this video is about the bonding and the forces that exist within this giant structure um, in a little bit more detail. So metals are made up of positive ions surrounded by delocalized electrons or sometimes you'll see this, I'll write it bigger, written as a C of delocalized elect electrons. And these come from the fact that the outer electrons in a metal atom are free to move when they're bonded as a metal. So the outer shell electrons are free to move. So I'll just link that here. So because the outer shell electrons of an atom are free to move. So if the outer shell electrons are free to move, that means they can move all around between um, these positive ions. And because they've left the metal atoms, we now call these positive ions in the middle. In another form, you can see it just here with the positive center um, and just an electron around the outside. So just to show that a bit clearer, I'll draw it bigger here. So you might see it depicted like this with a positive ion in the centre and then around the outside you just have the E for electron just showing that those outer shell electrons are then free to move throughout the metal. Between then the positive ions and the electrons around the outside, because you've got that positive and negative again, you get electrostatic forces. between positive ions positive ions and negative electrons which holds everything together and just how we described metals in a previous video the if you are to draw them the positive ion should have that regular structure um, with the C electrons around the outside now because these electrons are delocalized and free to move that gives metals some special properties and that is that they are very good conductors of heat and electricity. So the properties that this gives them is that they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Because the electrons are free to move um, flow of electrons allows the charge to be carried through the metal and hence it's a good conductor of electricity and also to be a good conductor of heat those electrons are free to move and can collide with other electrons and pass on the energy through the metal. The ability of the metal to conduct heat and electricity depends on the ability of the electrons to move throughout the metal and this is shown, for example, if the outer layer of the metal reacts with oxygen, you might get an oxide layer forming around the metal. Okay, so this, if this was copper, for example, let's use this as an example, and if this outer layer reacted with oxygen, you would form a copper oxide layer and this would restrict the movement of electrons throughout the metal. So the ability for it to conduct depends on the ability for the electrons to move. So if copper bonds with oxygen, you've got a metal and a non-metal in an ionic bond and because that's now ionically bonded, the copper would have given an electron to the oxygen and therefore it would there be fixed and then not able free not able 
to be able to move throughout the metal and it's a no longer a free electron so just keep an eye out for these in if they give you this kind of context in an exam question and think about the fact that to be able to conduct the electrons in the metal must be able to move